Ladies and gentlemen, this interview is with Sam Miles. He'll be competing XFC 71 against Sam Dobfeb 24 tickets at Eventbrite or hit up XFC Australia on Instagram and uh, find out how you can watch. Now, Sam Miles, very interesting one. He uh, won an O professional fighter, had a hell of an amateur career, uh, even uh, had a bout with John O'Mikolev, who's now the Hex Fight Series welterweight champion. Uh, now, look, he's got a hell of a potential, had a few little skids with injuries. He trains out of absolute MMA uh, in Collingwood, uh, in Melbourne, Victoria. Uh, it's Joseph Luciano, former Channel MMA Worldweight Champion. We've had him before. Jack Jenkins, who you might know from the UFC, uh, plus a slew of other amazing fighters. It really is one of the the best uh, MMA gyms in the country, and he trains under the great Simon Carson. Now, he goes on uh, to talk about his upcoming fight, and uh, I want to talk to him about a thing that you may not know, or maybe you know, and, and it doesn't sort of get touched on too much, but in one of the weirdest fun facts of all of our sport, uh, he is the son of the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of Defence, Richard Miles. So you might have seen him on the news, whatnot, and you're thinking, oh, a politician, and he's got a mixed martial arts fighter? Uh, well, you can obviously see with the chat that we have how much is... Uh, 20 years of the great Sam Miles. He's uh, got a nice, unique look at the sport and he speaks very well. And the reason why I like doing a lot of these interviews is you get invested in the fighters, it's not just the fight. Uh, so hopefully you enjoy. He obviously gives his thoughts on Sam Dobb as well. Uh, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Sam Miles. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the show, Sam Miles. Mate, welcome. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. Really, yeah. Uh... Happily on the show. I was gonna say first, first clear up. Uh, you were getting called Marlez. Marlez, yeah, I've, I've I've had Marlez as the nickname for a little bit, <laughs> um, but it's definitely Miles. Yeah, and walls at the end. <laughs> now you were taking on uh, Sam Dobb XFC seventy one. Uh, finally back from injury. Uh, first of all, how are you feeling? How are the injuries? Not too bad. I, I injured my thumb before my fight with Dimitri in the middle of last year. So I just did a broke broke my thumb a little bit. Um but I've hit I've recovered well from I've recovered well from that. And then actually the second fight was uh Dimitri ended up injuring his bicep. So I've had a little bit of a bad run just with timing of, of matchups, but it's good to be back. It's very good to be back. Yeah, because you had a pretty active amateur career, your professional career not off to the same start. Is that frustrating? It's very frustrating, yeah. I, I would have loved to have an active start to my pro career. But in the end, it hasn't worked out too bad. I probably turned pro a little earlier than I had first expected. So it was good to get that one out of the way. And, and I feel like now I've really settled into life as a pro and, and it's actually quite good timing. Are you coaching like full time or what's what's the career looking like? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coaching. So I coach maybe 15, 16 classes at Absolute. And on top of that, I'm doing uh, PT. So my life is is MMA at the moment. Which and is, uh, uh, yeah, Absolute MMA, the uh, absolute juggernaut of a gym. Uh, you guys aren't having the greatest run at the moment. Jack Jenkins hurt, Joey Luciano losing, uh, Dylan Lahari retiring, Adnam Larry. Uh, losing, Simon uh, ripping his knee out. I mean, the only one holding the team up is, is Lisa Kiriaku right now, mate. What's what's going on? I, I think that's just sort of the cycle of how it goes, at, especially in this sport. Anything can happen at any time. We've had a, we had a little bit of a bad run of injuries last year. It seemed like everyone was getting injured at the same time. The training room wasn't uh, what it had been the previous two years, just due to circumstances. But I can tell you now, it, it has really, uh, it's really fired back up in the new year. We've, we've got a couple of new people in the gym. Uh, the culture's way up. Everyone's healthy. It's probably, maybe it's, it might be the best I've seen it. Especially, we had a really good period towards the end of COVID there where the room was just very, very high level. And it, and it seems to be back in that place. And everyone is uh, enjoying, enjoying life as an MMA fan right now. And I forgot to mention, uh, unfortunately, Roger Shippen going down and Khan Offley leaving because of bad culture. No, I was kidding. Uh, and so was it, was it sad to see Khan Offley um, take off? And obviously you guys are, uh, you guys all have a good relationship, Khan, the Hex featherweight champion, um, allegedly. I don't know what's happening on there. But he, he, where he moved on to, uh, to Bali. Is it tough when you have to see guys make those decisions? I mean, it was, it, it's definitely sad to see him leave. 
I don't think that he has left for good. I think that's been played up a little bit more um, than the truth. I mean, he still feels a part of the team. He still feels like one of the boys. Mm. Everyone's really close. Everyone's got good relationships. It wasn't like he it wasn't like he fell out. But of course, it's definitely sad to see a leader leave the gym. But I'm sure uh, he's doing what's best for him and 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 his family. And he's over in Bali having a good time setting up a, a gym over there. So um, I'm just I'm excited for him and I'm. I'm certain he'll be back in the training room from time to time. Is that what he's doing? Is he setting up a gym over there? Well, I don't quote me on that. I know I know he's over there. He's over there uh, um, living and, and working and coaching. So, um, Is it sad? I mean, you, you kind of just touched on it, but is it? it's a, such an individual sport, but even teams like Absolute MMA, you guys have put years with each other. Is it hard trying to keep, you know, be there for your mates, but also do what's best for your career? It's funny like that it, it, it's a weird sport and that it, it's such an individual sport we're all on our own journeys but we're so reliant on each other to get to the the places that we want to be so i mean it, it's always sad to see someone leave but we have a great culture we have we have a you i would say we have a very unique culture in that we don't just come and train together and get along in the training room we get along outside of the training room and that seems to be from the top down too it seems like the leaders all get along and then there's a younger generation that they have their own little group and, and they all get along. And and even below that, we have a we have a group of, of young guys coming through, which um, I'm sure are going to make their name over the next over the next couple of years. Is it weird being a, a leader of the gym, especially to I mean a lot of the guys that don't get mentioned, just and even just random up and coming fighters throughout the team, and like you're one and all as a pro, and then you've got guys like Roger Ship and Jack Jenkins is in the UFC, uh, Luciano who's had a, a hell of a career. Do you sometimes feel like almost, if anything, like overwhelmed at like kind of, I don't want to say just being a one and O pro, but do you know what I mean? Like that level of like, oh, wow, like I'm a leader here. I mean, yeah, at, at times it's shocking to be uh, to be in that role because I am a bit of a chaotic human being. But um, <laughs> I've been with the I've been with this group of guys for a long time. And at first I was in awe of, of their talents. And, um, you know, it was even even the idea of, of getting to the sort of level that they were on when I when I first started was just seemed uh, seemed almost impossible. And but now to be here and to train with them for years and and to learn from them and now them wanting to learn from me, it's it's um it's a beautiful thing. I'm grateful to be a part of it. What do you think? It's rare in this sport, actually. So, um, you know, sometimes you, you got to smell the roses. I was gonna say, what is probably one of the, the the biggest best lessons that you've learned, kind of from one of them. I think Joe, I mean, Joe always, always taught me uh, you, a, a, anything that would ever happen in life, he would always say, you, remember, you wrote your own ticket. So whatever whatever decision you make is, um, uh, you know, you're, you're, it's, it's 100% down to you and you can't blame it on anyone else and you can't be victim. And I know that is something we all sort of know, but to hear it from him and to hear it in the settings that I've heard it from him at, at times when you feel like you've been wronged or you feel like you've been unlucky. And, um, you know, he constantly reminds me that, that it is, it is all up to you, you know? Um, so I think yeah, probably those, probably those wise words, you, you wrote your own ticket. I like that. Was it hard to see him? Cause he really was next in line for the UFC speaking of Joey Luciano and then to fall short of an up and coming a guy that you fought before John O'Mika left it to, to see, Joey get kind of so close and then and then hit that setback. Like, is that hard to see teammates go through that? Big time. I mean, not just as a, as a teammate, but as a friend to see him, um, you know, lose just right right before right before he's about to get that call up, and you know, it's tough. But to see how he's bounced back, to see his mentality. I mean, I've learned. I've, I mean, even from that situation, I've learned a ton just to see how that guy within by the next week he's, he's back to it and. I have no doubt that that Joey's going to make the big show, and um, his talent is just it's too high not to. And the Jono fight, it was a great fight as well. They they both put on a show. I don't think he lost too much stock in that fight. I think if anything, Jono just proved uh, his quality and and that he's on that level. And I think those two rise above the rest of the scene at the minute. Is it weird for you to see a guy that that you fought and then, you know, some injuries and stuff have derailed you to where you're one and oh, really trying to just launch that pro career and he's almost ready for the next level? Does it does it bother you at all that he kind of got it's almost like sped up a little bit for him? Mm, it, do, it doesn't bother me. There's many there's many paths to the top of the mountain. 
Uh, there's many paths to to get into the UFC, and, and my path is a little bit different. And I know that the landscape can change very quick, you know, but he, he could get an injury and by the end of the year I could have three or four fights or it could be the reverse. So the landscape can change very quick. I, I don't put too much weight on anyone else's journey. Uh, I'm I'm just focused on mine, and, and, I, and I know, you know, I, I have spent time in, in a previous life worrying about, you know, it needs to happen now, this person's doing it now, this person's, and it just, it's just mental energy wasted. Um, I'm focused on what I need to do. And what I need to do is, is go in there against Sam Dobbin, put on a good performance and continue that form for the rest of the year. I guess that, that kind of uh, touches on on the next question as well, which is I've asked Joey this before, but when you have a teammate like Jack Jenkins, who previous to the injury was, was skyrocketing type thing, he's in the UFC, that's your teammate. I've always wondered if there's that little bit of like not jealousy, but you just kind of like, damn, I really, I really want what they have. Is it, is it hard to sort of navigate? Maybe that's even a question for for Simon, your head coach. Is it hard to navigate watching your friends do really well, and then maybe others not doing as well, or a, a guy losing on a card, a guy winning on a card? Is it hard to maintain that that morale? Well, I mean, quite frankly, he he deserves it. So everything that Jack has right now, he deserves. He. Like we were saying before, he wrote his own ticket and he's done it very well and he has earned his position. And if anything, it's inspiring to see where he's at now, to see how, how life can change when you get there and that this is not um you know, this is not a tunnel with no light at the end. You know, if you put the work if you put the work in, the light at the end of the title is pretty damn bright. So it's pretty it's pretty good to see him doing his thing. Um making money and and on top of that he's been really smart about it too you know with it with the racing and and everything he's hitting the right market so it's actually if anything he's kind of put the blueprint of how to go about it correctly and just establishing he's like an ambassador for racing he's not just putting all his money into racing oh no yeah (laughs) (laughs) although you could probably do that too well he started like that probably started like that but now he's uh he's hit the sweet spot Oh uh, no, mate! Uh, a lot of people would be wondering why mix martial arts because, like, we don't want to dwell on it too much, or not even dwell on it. We don't want to touch on it too much because you are, like you said, writing your own ticket. But it it does go without saying, and you'd be remiss if you don't touch on it. I mean, y- your dad is the deputy prime minister. It is mentioned. It's no secret. But you're writing your own ticket. You don't ever mention it. You don't necessarily want it mentioned. First off, how do you go from from into mixed martial arts and then how do you deal with with that kind of in a way hanging over your head yeah i mean at, at first i used to probably put too much weight on it I used to uh, overthink it a little bit because I, I don't want to be i'm my own person doing my thing and, and i know you know people hear that and they have opinions straight away and they, they make their judgments on me but these days i, I really don't mind i'm i'm, I'm ultra impressed and, and proud of what my dad's doing he, he's He's killing it, and um, he's obsessed with what he does, and and he and he's doing a damn good job of it. So, nothing but impressed. But I have no other option but to be this. This is just simply who I am, and and um, I'm just going to keep following what my heart tells me to do, and and to let me here, and I, I couldn't be happier with with what I'm doing. Did was he into fighting? Like, how did you even trickle into that? Uh, he, he, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't even watch WWE as a kid. Like, oh. that, that was too much. So, <laughs> I wouldn't say I wouldn't say he was into it. But I have slowly brought him to the dark side, and now he's he's into it. He came, he came to that last heck show, and um, probably an eye opening experience for him. So, yeah, he's been he's been very supportive. I mean, at first, obviously, I think it's any parent does they're they're going to question your decision to want to get punched in the head or punch other people in the head but i think um i think as a kid i I was maybe even a little bit lost a little bit chaotic so i think he can see me in this space um finding you know who i am on the right path obsessed passionate uh so he's he's quite supportive and now he would be a a very intelligent man has he given you any advice in into your career I mean, he's given he's given me a lot of great advice. Every every time I talk to him, he's one of those people. Let me put it like this: trying to have a debate with my dad, the kid. <laughs> you know, I come come to the debate. I'm I'm prepared. Maybe I got in trouble at school, but I've got I've got my reasons, and I'm coming. I've been planning all day, and I'm sitting in the car, and we're uh, we're having that conversation. And halfway through the conversation, I'm thinking, 
this motherfucker's right. He's got me. So, I mean, he's taught me a lot. Every, t- every time we have a chat, he's always got great advice for me. I um, can't think of anything super specific right now, but he's, um, yeah, he's, he's full of great advice. And anytime I need, need that sort of chat, he, he's the right person to call. Do you ever hit him with the like, nah, I'm only going to listen when you're actually prime minister? Like, no. Nah. I should start hitting him with that. <laughs> start hitting him that now. back to back to your career because you really are one to watch and everyone has said it since your since your amateur career have you felt any pressure going into the professional i felt a bit of pressure going into my first pro for sure you know obviously you you know you make a bit of a name in in the amateurs and you do realize when you turn pro that that meant really nothing so that first, that first professional fight, there's definitely a bit of pressure. And I know I put a lot of pressure on myself to perform in that fight. Um, but there's not, I mean, I'm, I get to do, I, I, I get to do this for a living, which is pretty cool. Uh, and I don't t- put too much pressure on myself. I'm just trying to be the best that I can possibly be at this and wherever the chips fall, they will fall. And, and I'll be, I'll be proud of myself as long as I know I've, I've you know, I've left no stone unturned, and I think I'm doing a pretty good job of that so far. Do you know much about Sam Dobb? I do know a bit about Sam Dobb. I, I fought on Eternal in 2021 as an amateur. That was my second fight, and uh, Sam fought Nick Kepu on that card. And I actually remember watching that fight. It was a, it was a very exciting fight. I remember watching that fight just kind of being in awe of, of you know, how these guys are doing this as a career. And then beyond that, I actually ended up sparring with, Sam in Thailand. We did a couple rounds maybe two years ago. So we've got a bit of familiarity with each other. Um, so it should be a it should be an interesting fight. Did that uh I mean I can only imagine that, you know, it wasn't full on, but do you get a little like, oh, I got the best of him there, or he knows, or you know, he got the best of me there. Was there any of that? Well, I won't comment too much on on what happened. I will just say I'm gonna get a very different version of Sam because I, I caught him on the mats. You know, I don't know whether it's round two or round three, but it's a very different version, especially the style that he fights in. He's a he, he's a hot starter. He's going to run at me, and I'm going to ver- get a very different version to what I got that day. Um, but what I will say is I, I've come a long, long way from that day, and I've put a lot of hours in since then. And if he's done the same thing, he's put the same amount of hours in, he's put um, the same kind of work in that I have, we're going to have a good fight. And if he hasn't, it's going to be a tough night for him. And uh, in terms of, of just your career as a whole, like after it's all said and done in, in mixed martial arts, how does Sam Miles want to be remembered? I mean, when I, I started this a little bit late. So when I, when I started, I didn't have, I sort of had the goals of just, I just wanted to be a part of it somehow. I didn't know how that was going to be. I didn't know whether it was going to be as a coach and when I, whether it was going to be as a fighter. The more I got into it, the more obsessed I, I became, um, the more I realized that, that, I've got something here and uh, I'm going to go for it. So I guess for me, you know, whether, whether I'm a six and six journeyman or whether my potential is to be a professional, I uh, sorry, whether my potential is to be a world champion, I, I'm going to find out. I'm going to put in the work to find that out. Uh, and I just want to be, I just want to, I mean, my old coach, Ed Bablock, who's, who's an absolute gem in this sport, always used to tell me stories about some of the fighters that he trained and, if I could one day be one of those stories of that he's telling to one of the younger guys, that would be a pretty uh, that would be a pretty great chip on chip to have. Well, this is Sam Miles. I wish you the best of luck. Feb twenty fourth against Sam Dobbs. It's gonna be an absolute cracker. XFC seventy one tickets at Eventbrite. Thank you so much for your time and I could talk to you for hours, but uh, I will let you go back to that fancy boardroom that you have behind you. Well thanks, Mitch, and I, I really appreciate what you're uh, what you're doing for the scene you're putting putting us young fighters out there and um yeah it goes a long way and we appreciate it well i can't fight so i need to be involved somehow thanks mate